Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's study, we are going to be looking into Proverbs chapter 29 and seeing God's wisdom for us there. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this study today. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for your glorious grace, for your mercy and your truth, and for allowing me to be a continued minister of the Word of God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that I would do it justice and blessing, and that we would continue to have your leading and guiding in this study today. I need your wisdom, and all of those who are reading and following along with these studies needs your wisdom as well. Lord God, the whole world is in lack of wisdom, and we pray that you would grant us your wisdom this day. Those of us who are ambassadors of the truth need to continue in your blessed and holy truth, giving your wisdom each and every day. As I pray these things in your precious, holy, and righteous name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let us begin by reading Proverbs chapter 29. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest, yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bewrayeth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Beginning in verse number 1 in Proverbs chapter 29, the Lord tells us, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Refusal of right counsel will destroy you. If you refuse to listen to the word of God, you refuse to listen to God Almighty, that will destroy you. Verse number 2, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The Bible is telling us the consequence of good and bad leaders. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And this people is God's people, the right people. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. 
This is just true. He's giving us knowledge to know this is what happens. This is a way to discern whether people are for God or not. If you have a leader who is all for abortion and abominable sin and riotous behavior, and you don't have a problem with that, you might not be Christian. In fact, you're probably not. You need to get saved. Repent. Verse number three. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. A wise son rejoiceth his father, but a foolish son will curse his father. That's just the understanding here. A, a foolish son is going to take everything that his father has and keep companion with harlots and spend his substance. That's just what they're going to do. It's a shame that that's the case, all you can do is raise your children well and pray for them. Raise them well according to the word of God. Be careful. There's a whole lot of people out there who think that they can raise well without God the Father. I'm sorry to tell you, that's not possible. Verse number four. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Good rulers build the land, and they build the people in the land. Uh, but bad rulers receive gifts and destroy the land. They receive these gifts of money. They say, look, I can't wait till you butter my palm with that wicked money, oh big old corporation, you. Uh, that's what wicked rulers do, and that's the reason why America and so many places all across this world have wicked rulers. Extortion, fornication, perverseness, wickedness embezzlement, these things are the commonplace among the world today because we don't have righteous, God-fearing rulers in the majority anymore. Verse number five. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Flattery is a trap. You are trapping people with flattery. You tell them they look good. You tell them they're doing good when they are doing neither of these things. If my friend says, hey, is my hair okay? And I say yes, even though I see a stick of gum in their hair, basically. Uh, I'm not blessing them. I'm just setting them up for failure. Same applies for morality's sake. If my friend is lying and doing no good to others, and I say, you're doing so great for God, you're a blessing, he's going to continue doing what he is doing and reap the consequences. And I'm going to reap those consequences as well. Verse number six, in the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. Sinners are always trapped by their sin, but the righteous doth sing and re rejoice because we aren't trapped by your sins. We aren't trapped by our own sins. We have forgiveness and mercy, and if you are righteous, truly so, you will try your hardest to escape sin. Verse number seven, the righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Right folk help the poor, the wicked ignore the poor. This is pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. God's just wanting us to, to be able to discern whether a person is good or not. Verse number eight, Scorner, scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Scorners cause trouble. Wise folk remove trouble. That's all God's saying here, and it's pretty simple. Verse number nine. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. There is no winning with the unwise. There is no winning with the foolish. There is no winning with the prideful and the abominable. I give folks the gospel and move on. I don't debate the word of God with people who don't understand and have not read the word of God, they will not get it. And all you are doing is wasting yours and God's time. Don't do it. Give folks the gospel and move on. If they want to argue with you, let them go. They don't care for God. They are seeking he uh, hell. They are seeking destruction. Verse number 10. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Bloodthirsty folk are those who hate Christians. People who are murderers, abominable, wicked folk hate the righteous. They hate Christians. They hate good people. But the just seek his soul. The just seek to 
try and help these bloodthirsty folk. The just try to seek the righteous folk in the world. They try to say, you know what, I'm going to be with them. They try to seek to do good. Verse number 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Wise folk are patient with their words. They don't just argue for argue's sake. They don't just scream and shout and act a fool and tell people their opinion when their opinion is useless. Foolish folk do that all too often. Verse number 12. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. This is an interesting form of discernment. You can tell whether a ruler is wicked or not if all his servants are wicked. A good ruler won't have bad servants. And if a good ruler has bad servants, you're probably not following a good ruler. He's just pretending to be one. It's a way to discern. Verse number 13. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The Lord has made us all and has blessed or cursed us based on our choices and actions in this life. He's made us all. And God prepares blessing and cursing for all those who deserve blessing and cursing. Verse number 14. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Kings thrive in rightly judging. If a ruler or a leader does not rightly judge, he is no good. Amen. Verse number 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Right discipline for children is sorely needed, folks, and is quite lacking today. The rod and reproof give wisdom. You need to punish your children right. You need to correct them. You need to tell them that they're doing wrong, and you need to tell them how to do right, and you need to lead by example. We have a generation of folk who doth not bless their mother, and they curse their father. They curse God. We have a generation of folk who do nothing but wrong and seek nothing but greed and have no good for anyone else besides themselves in their own hearts and imaginations. We are facing a day where folks are as greedy and individualistic as they have ever been and as horrible, abominable, and wretched as they have ever been. It is not good, and that all stems to the fact that we have forsaken God in the home in the church, in the schools, and in public. Refuse that. Remember God. Remember right punishment. Remember right teaching. Verse number 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. The more evil folk there are, the more sin there is. That's pretty typical understanding here. But God is also telling us that we shall see their destruction. The righteous shall see the end of all the wicked in this world. We'll see it. Even if it isn't until the new earth and the new heaven, we shall see it. On judgment day, the white throne judgment of God, we shall see their destruction. Verse number 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. A corrected son will bless you. A well-taught son will do right. Now again, everyone makes their own personal choices. But good children coming out of a bad home and bad teaching are much less likely than good children coming out of a good home with good teaching. Verse number 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If there are no goals, if there are no goals in your life or in the life of your country or in the life of your family or anything, really, the people perish. They perish without vision. They perish without understanding what is right and to do right in the world. We perish without a goal to move to. People become depressed and depraved and deprived of their own lives and of their own ideas, their own thoughts, their dreams when they have no goal to reach. But he that keepeth the law of God, happy is he. 
If you keep the law of God, if you keep his word, God will bless you. You will have a goal to reach, and that goal is to be righteous daily. Verse number 19. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Now again, this is one of those verses where God is assuming that you understand that God is talking about a wise and righteous servant. Because the Bible is telling us here that a right servant will not answer back. Just like a right child will not answer you back with back-mouthing or bad-mouthing or talking back or having a tone or attitude towards you. Good children don't do that. Good servants don't do that. They don't answer you back. They just obey. They understand. They follow your leading. Verse number 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. More hope of for a fool than a blabberer. There's a lot of folks out there who blabber away. They are hasty in their words. They don't think before they speak. There's more hope of a fool than of him. Many people who don't think before they speak say things that burn riches and destroy lives. Think before you speak. Verse number 21. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. Lead men well, and they will be loyal to you. Lead your children well, and they will be loyal to you. Lead your servants well, and they will be loyal to you. It will be as if you are gaining a son out of them. Verse number 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Angry folk are sinful, abounding in transgression. They are abounding in this. They stir up strife. They cause fights, and they are full of sin. Verse number 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Pride destroys, humility lifts up. That's what we're understanding here. Honor shall uphold the humble in spirit, but pride, a man's pride shall bring him low. It shall destroy him. It shall take him down to the lowest depths in his life. Pride doesn't save you and it doesn't help you. It destroys you. Be humble, be honorable, be righteous, rather. Verse number 24. Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bereath it not. Partnering with sin makes you sin. It makes you in the life of sin. It makes you sinful. You are agreeing to this sin. You are agreeing to this cursing. You hate your own self by partnering with sin. Verse number 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Trust in God, do not fear men. Jesus tells us why fear him which can kill the body. Fear him which can kill both body and soul in hellfire. Fear God. He is the creator and the destroyer. Fear God. Verse number 26, Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Your judgment will come, friend. No matter how much you try to soften up the judge, you try to soften up the rulers and leaders and say, look, I didn't do wrong, your judgment will come from God. In verse 27, An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Verse number 27 has an interesting idea here, and it's telling us, God is telling us, that this is what folks think of each other. The righteous don't think well of the wicked, and the wicked don't think well of the righteous. This is true time without end. And this is because God made righteousness to be enmity with wickedness and vice versa. You are in the state of being an enemy of wickedness when you are righteous and vice versa. This is the reason why God tells us that friendship with the world is enmity with God. You cannot be a friend of sin and a friend of God at the same time. It does not happen. It does not exist. It's not possible. Regardless of what you say, think, believe, or feel, this is the truth of God, and I would far uh, rather believe God before I believe anybody else and their 
misconceptions and their ideals that they have being a human being who's lived for a finite amount of time and doesn't even understand their own days coming forth. You're not promised tomorrow. Don't give me your opinions about God's word. God tells us the truth. Believe the truth. Proverbs chapter 29 is reminding us of our need to be righteous in all that we do. In order to be a blessing, we must obey the Lord of blessing, Jesus Christ. You cannot be a blessing. You cannot be a righteous man. You cannot be a good man. You cannot be a worthwhile human being if you do not follow the word of God. The reason being is because all those who do not follow the word of God are murderers, liars, adulterers, fornicators, abominable folk, belial, people who do not do that which is right unto themselves, others, and God. We must do right. We must be blessings unto others. We must be good folk. If you want the world to change, it doesn't take a turning of a new leaf. It takes repentance towards God and a heart willing to change its ways for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today as we looked into Proverbs chapter 29 and seen God's wisdom in action and how that we ought to be righteous folk reminding us that we need to be a blessing unto others. And the only way we can do that is by following the Lord of blessing himself. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below and tell me what you think so far. Join me next time in Proverbs chapter 30 as we get ever so closer to finishing the book of Proverbs. But until then, may you have a blessed day.